Welcome, bienvenidos. My name is Roxana and this is Avidiva. And today we're going to have a little chat about process and life and how sometimes life hits you in the gut and how do you respond to it. So for those of you who don't know me, I am in a process where I am ill many times and there is no telling. I have an invisible illness that makes it impossible for me to know when I'm going to have what we commonly call a flare up. In my case, my ailment has to do with my digestive system and I, it's like having the flu for long periods of time, okay? Sometimes those periods of time can be two days, sometimes they can be a week, sometimes they can be a month, sometimes they come with a warning so you have time to prepare, sometimes you are just standing in the middle of the supermarket and you get one. I have been fortunate enough to not have one of those, but I know how they happen. I have had many here where if I don't have, thank God this apartment is so small because I can run to either one of the two bathrooms, especially when I'm here alone. It's a nightmare when the other two people that live here are both using the bathrooms at the same time because then I don't have a place to go. But anyway, bottom line is that I am in the process of looking for work. I'm aware that most people are not going to hire me because I am, I, I have what they consider a disability. I am looking for something I can do from home because that way I have to pass something by. It is what it is. And so my daughter was talking to me the other day because clearly if I'm looking for work, I don't have as much time to create content. And she looks at me, she goes, well, why don't you just film the process? And I decided to start doing that today. Now. For those of you who don't know, I have an email and that email currently has about 120,000 emails in it because most of it is promotions from companies. Um, I just don't look at it. People who know me either have my phone so they text me or they know me, they have my profile on social media and they send me DMs. So I rarely if ever get emails from people I know. However, because I have 120,000 and, you know, I get really ramped up to organize that thing. I take care of 10, 20,000 and then I am so exhausted that I forget and next thing you know, it goes back up to 120,000. So what I decided to do last week is I decided to create a separate email account where I keep track of everything that's happening. So in a few minutes, you're going to see what my day looks like and how I'm processing the different things that I need to do to get my day to good start and my week to a good start. How long I can keep this up, I don't know. I need to make money, so I guess I'm gonna keep it up until I either have one of two things, either a job or customers or clients that I can um, facilitate for and make a little living because I definitely need to help around the house. So let's start from the top. I'm here in front of my computer right now, and as you can see, I'm about to show you inside, but. Let me give you a, an idea of how we're working now. I have four areas that I have to work on. And so part of the process is determining what those areas are. Now, if you followed me from a while back, you know that I have some health issues that make it harder for me to sit for long periods of time in front of a computer. So I decided to turn it into chunks of time of a maximum of an hour and a half, minimum an hour. Now, do I think I can concentrate for an hour on something? Absolutely. Is the pain going to let me is another completely different story. I'm aiming for an hour and a half. And so what am I going to do? One chunk is an hour and a half. This is the first one in the day because it's when I'm the less pain. And that hour and a half is going to be on the actual job search. The second chunk is an hour and a half of a learn academy which is a place where i actually purchase a system where i can go ahead and learn everything i need to know to establish my own freelance agency now you might be thinking at this point you could have done all that research yourself why did you buy a course well sometimes we pay for the convenience the difference between me doing all the research myself and having paying somebody because at that time I did have the money to pay them was that they have everything on the Academy. All I have to do is go back. I have lifetime access, by the way, all I have to do is go back 
look for what I need to look for, learn whatever I need to learn and set it up. The third chunk of time that I wanted to have is an hour and a half of taking pictures and posting on Shopmark. Now, you guys know that I'm doing this whole thing where I am taking whatever I can take and putting it on Postmark to see if I sell it. Am I going to have any success on that? I don't know. I have to spend more time on Postmark so I can learn all the ins and outs. And hopefully, I've heard people that have had luck in the first few days. Clearly, that's not gonna happen because I've been on Postmark for a few weeks now. And the average is about two months for people to start seeing sales because people don't trust you until they see you for a while. So that's a long-term money operation. The fourth money income producing activity is actually creating videos like this one on for YouTube. If you are paying attention, you'll realize that four chunks of time of an hour and a half is six hours a day. And you might be telling me, well, that's not a 40 hour work week or that's not eight hours a day. No, because I'm working with what I have. Two things I didn't mention. I said I was creating content for an hour and a half, like YouTube videos. I didn't mention reels, TikTok, or shorts. Those I can do with that phone from my bed at any time of the day and night. And I am working on a schedule so that I make sure that I post at least one every day on all three of those platforms. I'm probably going to have a lot of the next few days when I can put more than one because I have all this stuff that I haven't added to any of those yet because either I posted them all on TikTok or I posted some of them one place or another, but I am creating more content that I can just post on those three platforms because I, I have a lot of stuff that I want to get rid of on the phone in terms of images and whatnot and, and, and things that we've done and things that we've seen. And I figured it would be a lot better if I just go ahead and post everything and delete it from the phone. So I have an empty memory for what I'm hoping to do in the future. That is hours that I'm not included in, 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 in those chunks because I can lay in bed and do that in bed. Now, the other thing that I didn't mention is how many days of the week I'm going to do this. The plan is to do this six days a week. And so if I'm doing it for six days a week, that's 36 hours of work already. So yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm going to work more than 40 hours a week. But I keep in mind that I've been looking for work for 13 months. I took a break in February and I started back again in March. And there are a lot of things that I find very interesting about this process. For example, um, I'm going to give you an example that I noticed on my new email. When I started this morning, I had 101 emails on that particular email. I brought it down to about 69. When I started filming what you're watching, I was up to 72 already. So here's the thing that I find fascinating about this process. If you look at the screen, you're going to notice that I got a lot of emails from companies and I'm being very um, loose with the term companies because what happens is you sign up f for a, a, a job search, like, you know, you have career builder, you have sleep recruiter, you have all these other companies. And what usually ends up happening is I don't know if this is even legal, but they sell your name to other companies and those companies, all they have is a bot that goes looking for job boards and they match the job board to what you want. And then they send you an email and they tell you, Ooh, people are, uh, uh, we're looking for X, Y, Z. And then you open that email and what you find either one or two things, either it's a announcement for another job. Well, actually, yeah an announcement for a job board so that you're applying to the job board, not really to the company, or they send you to another list of possible things that you can do. It is very frustrating to look for a job in, in, in those circumstances. So I decided to take a little different tack, which I don't know yet if I'm going to post it here or not, because I do believe that my LinkedIn shows all my personal information and I don't want you guys 
I don't want to dox myself, okay? So I might not show it, but what I decided to do is I decided to write a document on LinkedIn asking people, because I do have this thing where you can be a creator for LinkedIn, supposedly. I don't know if anybody ever looks at those. To be honest with you, the one time that I posted, I got a lot of responses. So I'm hoping that this time it works out the same. But what I'm doing over there is explaining, look, I, this is what's going on. This is what's been happening. I don't think this is the, the way for me to find a job. The one thing that I always remember about back in the 90s is guerrilla marketing. And I think somewhere in this house, I still have the book. And one of the only, le if well, actually the only lesson that I learned from that book is that you need to find other ways that are not the typical ways for you to find a job. Right now, job boards on the internet are just as bad as newspaper advertising. You just, it, it's a needle in the haystack. And the funny thing is that I know a lot of people, because I live in downtown here in the town that I live in, I live in downtown. So I am very close to all the small businesses that operate in downtown. And one of the things that we talk about all the time is the fact that they do post on Indeed looking for jobs and whatnot. And they get bombarded with a lot of, you know, possible candidates. But for every person that does that, you have 10 people that are just a job board that wants more candidates or want more jobs. And it's a very redundant exercise on futility. The other option that you have, if you're looking for a job like me, is to go to specific places. But for that, you have to have your own little list of companies that you want to work for. And that's not as effective when you are using an hour and a half of your day to look for jobs. The third option that you have available is kind of like introspection because the first thing you would need to do, and, and, and I might go through all of these and show you how the process looks for me depending on what I end up doing. But one of the processes that you can go through is just sit down, take a break, technically speaking, from the, all this nonsense, sit down with a pad and a pen or with a computer and a, and a file or whatever, and write down everything that you can do, meaning that you have some area of expertise on, and everything you want to do. And sometimes those two things, are they, they're not going to look the same. But nine times out of ten, the job that you want to do or the thing that interests you will have aspects that you've already done in other jobs. You just have to see how those particular skills translate to that particular field that you might be interested in. If I end up doing all the things that I've shown you above, I might post them online. I don't know yet because, again, I don't want to dox myself. But in the meantime, I hope this inspires you if you are feeling alone because you're over 50 and you're looking for a job and you're having zero luck i would love to hear from you leave me a comment below let me know what you're struggling with what has been the hardest part and whatnot one of the things that i forgot to mention when i was talking to you about job search is the option other options that you may have now, while I'm looking for work, I'm also building an agency and that requires money that I don't have clearly. But one of the ways that you can get money is, well, we can use like sell your own stuff and get some money, which is one of these things that we will be doing. But there's also the possibility that there's a grant out there for you. For example, I have someone in my life who's a photographer and they are looking for grants, which they are available, they just have to compete for them, in which you might get five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 for you to, number one, register your business, and number two, go ahead and buy the equipment that you need to do even better and promote yourself. And one of the things I did today is I actually went on a particular grant that you're seeing on the screen right now, and I filled out a document that was kind of like, okay, why do you want to do this? And I went ahead and answered the two questions, which ironically helped me because I have yet to write a business plan for the company itself and for what I want to be doing uh, myself in terms of social media, not only social media for other people, but for myself. 
And it just hit me that, you know, that particular, one of the two questions that, well, actually both of them, I can use as part of the very simple, I'm going to do a very simple business plan because I'm not looking for loans. I just want to have some sort of um, a plan so that I know what direction I'm going. And that particular grant helped me a lot with visualizing what I really want to do and how I really want to do it and what equipment I need and how much money I need for this, that, and the other. And I thought that was really an interesting process, which is why I'm showing it to you guys. But also it's another avenue. At the end of the day, you know, you can sit here and bash people for trying to get money to have their channels and buy more equipment and buy food and buy stuff for their cat or whatever it is that people ask for money. The reality is that we're living in a world where if you don't have money, you can't make anything happen. Reality. Those are facts. And some of us are not ashamed to tell people, listen, I want money so that I can do X, Y, or C. Some people will shame you for that. And that's their issue. That has nothing to do with the, with me. The other day I saw somebody, now, now I don't know if you know this about Twitter, but Twitter has gone into a place where it, it, it feels like the Wild West, to be honest with you. And so people will come and go and people will ask you for money for one thing and use it for another thing and blah, blah, blah. And I remember distinctly this person talking about, because of course nothing is more apparent that we always get attacked by our own. So if there's a woman making her way in politics and not necessarily as a politician, but as someone working behind the scenes, this person is working behind the scenes for the political party of her choice. And you have a bunch of jealous Nellies that are sitting around criticizing every move that she makes and talking about how, well, she's getting divorced and she was asking money for the divorce, but now she's asking money for this or blah, blah, blah. Things change. Things happen. It's reality of life. I find it very amusing that the people criticizing her were also women. I have always told you, maybe not in this channel, but on the other channel, you know, this channel, uh, I've always told you that the worst offenders when it comes to a marginalized group is members of that marginalized group. Women will attack women for no reason whatsoever. Latinos will attack other Latinos for no reason whatsoever. LGBTQ, right now we have the LGBT without the T situation. Do you really think that if you pander to the right in whatever country you are, because that's not just happening in the U.S., do you really think that by you pandering to the right, they're going to accept you as a gay or lesbian person? Because they're not. Just saying. But not getting into politics, let's be clear about the fact that every single marginalized group will attack their own. It's like we don't want to let our people get ahead for some reason. Which is really interesting when you watch rich people, regardless of what community they belong to, because it's really funny how you stop being a member of your marginalized community when you get to a certain economic level. And you all haven't figured that out yet, have you? But anyway, that's more for metamorphosis and, and less for Abdiva. The thing about it is, if you actually look at rich people, they don't have all this gatekeeping. If you are at their level financially, they will help you get ahead. But when we are in lower levels, middle or low income, we don't like to help each other. We like to see each other fail. That is really sad. It's also a mentality that needs to end. So if you are a person that are looking, that, that, that is sitting at home and you've been looking for work for 13, 14 months and you haven't been able to find anything much like me, think about the possibility of building your own little thing. Instead of spending 60 hours a week looking for work, maybe spend 30 hours a week looking for work and 30 hours building your own little nest egg. And... If you need to ask for grants, if you need to pull, uh, to make a GoFundMe or a Indiegogo or anything like that to get money to not only be able to eat, but be able to start buying the equipment or the apps or the software or whatever it is that you need to build your business, 
consider that option because I'm in the process right now that I'm going to be spending maybe 50, 60 hours a week working on trying to find ways to make money for my home. And I can tell you right now, I'm selling whatever I can find. I am also uh, asking for donations. I am also asking for grants from the government and everywhere else because I do believe in my abilities to be a productive member of society. It's actually really funny when you consider people who are always being detractors of, of others who might um, ask for tips or ask for donations or whatever. One thing that always stands out is that they tell you, oh, you just want to be lazy and not do anything. Um, content creation is not lazy. The beauty of content creation is that, for example, Reels, Shorts, and TikToks, I can do this from bed. And so if I'm sick on a particular day, like last week, I can still ed either edit and get them ready for the next week or just post content from bed. If I have enough pictures that I have taken on the weekend and I get sick during the week, I can spend the entire time posting that content or creating new content based on the content that I already have on my phone or on my camera. So keep that in mind. There are many other ways, and, and, and you might say, well, you're diluting yourself, and, and I mean like spreading myself too thin. That might be so, but the, the thing about it is, you don't know which one of those is going to be the one that will make you a little bit of money so that this month you can survive. And to me, the most important thing right now my goal is that next year I'll be thriving. But in order for me to thrive, I have to sacrifice myself now. And that means have as many baskets out there to see where I can get something to get by. I think that's all I want to say on that topic. You have a wonderful day.